Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nerd Impacts, um, I guess just weekly Mandalorian review. We don't really have a name, but we're going to review the newest episode, The Tragedy. Uh, this, this by far is the best episode of The Mandalorian yet. And I feel like I'm saying that every week this season, but they keep up in their game. Well, we Nick, don't focus too hard on that. But <laughs> I'm trying to pick my favorite episode now that you said that. Oh man. So we get some really cool things in this episode. Um it when it starts off, I think it was still part of the the recap, but the one thing I noticed was again I noticed more details this time. Moff Gideon standing in front of what looked like Vader armor and noticed that there was several of these um what i thought at the time were just dark vader armor um and his own armor looks kind of dark dark vader-ish but that uh we find out what that actually is later in the episode but um it was really cool in the beginning Ma mando calling the child grogu like regularly yeah. just call. and it's starting to grow <laughs> on me it's starting to feel feel right yeah yeah uh, after my statement from last week uh went at the beginning of the episode the fact that they had that in it helped it definitely helped with the, the name uh and even hearing like how um chris can you remind me of the actor's name for din pedro pascal yeah uh, Pedro Pascal's act or performance uh, during that scene definitely helped in uh, accepting the the Grogu name and feeling feeling mm -hmm. like it belonged because to him he himself he's calling him Grogu 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 like he's just saying it over and over again because he's just he's Trying excited to, to it yeah he's he's getting used to it and he's excited now that the kid actually uh, is like makes that connection like that you know that kind of connection that you get when you try and start a conversation with somebody that kid mm -hmm. the grogu is now making that connection when uh din says his name yeah yeah and we see him in the in the ship in the ship training grogu a little bit um with the ball yeah i love that so that was really cool and we get some more grogu uh force action later in this episode actually quite a bit but actually this is the as far as the child or grogu using the force this was the most force heavy episode i think yes with his demonstration of his power i think it's uh hopefully this is just a taste of things to come yeah and this episode to me just with some of the scenes with like um, Din flying with the jetpack and uh, all the different types of ships that we saw and um, all the different types of weaponry and missiles and spoiler alert, freaking Boba Fett using the, uh, with his armor. Yeah. He was kicking ass with the, the Tuscan gear even before he got his armor. Yeah. Nah, man. The, oh, this, this episode was just so cool. Dude, that scene, one of my favorite scenes in this is when Boba Fett smashes that Stormtrooper's <laughs> yes. helmet. And you see shards. Repeatedly, multiple Stormtroopers just bashed right in the head. Yeah, but that one, you just see the cra the smashed up helmet and you see the pieces flying all over. Dude, without any bloodshed, by far the most brutal scene I've ever seen in a Star in anything Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. It was just visceral with the sound and the crunching and the pieces flying. And in so in cool. that moment, in that in that scene, uh 
I was I was saying to myself uh, of all the times that I say that I feel the show is too Disney like or Disney gives too much of their spin on not something. anymore. I, I didn't feel <laughs> I didn't feel like that was a Disney scene. Oh uh, man, it just so cool. And we get um Fennec is back now too. Yeah. Um what started out as very adversarial with Boba Fett threatening to have Fennec um, sniper out the child because uh, they're on Typhon at this point and uh, on the was the call, the calling rock or whatever they called it where um, I don't know if that was actually called but the child is trying to basically alert other Jedi of his existence yes he's and reaching he, out through the force and he had like a blue force field around him at the time so that so like Din couldn't get to him, but Fennec was going to sniper him off if they didn't give her, uh, Boba his armor back. And through fighting some stormtroopers and a Imperial infiltrator and a lot of cool battle scenes, they ultimately become buddies. Yeah. And now we got Boba Fett for what it sounds like the rest of the season. Maybe longer. What episode are we on again? We got, five? I think we got, no, this was six. We got two left. Yeah, definitely possibly the end, until the end of the season. Yeah, well, I'm imagining at least until they rescue Grogu, which I'm guessing will be in the final episode. Um, and may, maybe, maybe it isn't. Maybe this is a story arc that stretches to the next season. Maybe this becomes a longer thing of them trying to get Grogu back. And maybe Grogu is be, you know, maybe we got to worry about Grogu being indoctrinated into the dark side because they're they're hinting more and more at that that there's something dark in him. At the end, towards the end of this episode, you see him ch using force choke on the stormtroopers, which he did once before on um, uh, Cara Dune. Remember, he used force choke on her once. Mm -hmm. Force choke is a dark side power yes but remember he's still an infant so he's still very moldable yeah but i think they're, they're 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 trying to tell us though especially with some of the stuff ahsoka said that there is a darkness in him mm -hmm. definitely yeah but maybe, i i don't think he's going to i really don't think he's going to follow the same path as anakin i think they're going to do something different with him and have him come out pro possibly as like the one to bring the balance to the force uh nick i do have a theory of what Moff gideon's actually trying to do think about it he's got the dark saber he has these dark troopers that are m modeled after darth vader his arm he's trying to make himself into a darth vader by yeah. experimenting the midichlorian injection into snokes yeah he ultimately wants to inject himself with the m cells and get force powers. That's that's what Moff Gideon's trying to do. This guy's insane. But dude, I kind of hope he succeeds. Because how cool would that be? I... Did you notice? Okay, so. The dark saber actually looked like a blade. It does, yeah, because it's it, it's a lightsaber, but it but it's Mandalorian in nature. Oh. it's a Mandalorian lightsaber. See, I was wondering if they were going to go like a more samurai route with the uh, like, um, with Moff Gideon's own twist, like he puts his own like spin on the on the look and goes more samurai route. Like samurai Darth Vader. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, oh man, this episode is just so crazy, and so good in so many ways. Um, I, I, th I thought that was hilarious. Uh, spoilers with um, Boba Fett. Uh, aiming the, his rocket launcher at the ship mm -hmm. and he hits the, the top one down and the top one falls into the second one. And then Din's like, great shot. 
he says, I was actually aiming for the other one. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was so cool at the end when he they were like Din was acting like they were about to part ways and they're like, No, like we made you a promise. You gave me my armor. We're gonna make sure this child is safe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like that was uh, gonna be his reaction when you got um when you got Din standing down at, for the whole thing once uh Bobo tells him the story behind the armor and Din recognizes uh Django's um uh his legitimacy to to owning it. Yeah. Yeah, when he realized well, he didn't know that his father actually was a Mandalorian, was a family. Yeah. Um but yeah, and oh this episode is just so cool in so many ways. And I just felt like the production value was just so much higher than any other episode. This felt like a freaking Star Wars movie. It did. It and I the the way that they tell the story in this without the the constraint to a set time length really helps in how in bringing this to life and making it the best it could be because like as I was talking to you about earlier uh, by the end of the fight scene where we were already like 25 minutes in the, into the episode and I was like it didn't feel like 25 minutes like it mm-hmm. just as you're watching it it feels so natural because they're not restricted so their storytelling is very natural yeah, the, the episodes are just as long as the pace of the story. It, they don't care. This was a sh- one of the shortest episodes. It was only 35 minutes. We, we've had episodes over like 50 minutes. But this still, but there was so much story there because they were able to tell it at the pace that it had to be told. Yeah. It wasn't like they didn't have to stretch it out an extra 10 minutes and then it probably would have felt weird. I agree. But, yeah, guys, if you haven't seen this episode, First of all, what the hell are you doing listening to this? Second of all, go watch it. Um, <laughs> but oh, uh, anything else we should mention, Nick, about uh, the tragedy? Not that I can think of. I How think about we, Man- Mando flying with Baby Yoda is pretty cool. We're gonna have to go the rest of the way with the windows down, <laughs> and then he's just fine with the jetpack yeah. holding Baby Yoda. Um, but yeah, can't wait to see what happens next. Um, can't wait to see more of Boba Fett. And dude, what do you want to? They're gonna be doing an Obi Wan series. What do you want to bet that? And I don't know how they would do it because this would be. Oh wait, Obi Obi Wan's Obi Wan's dead in this point in the timeline. But he is a Force Ghost. So it would be cool to see Force Ghost Obi Wan pop up towards the end of this. <laughs> they could Force Ghost any of them into it. Yeah. Force Ghost Obi Wan pop up. Well, no, I mean, t- kind of um, because we got an Obi Wan series coming. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can't wait to see what Jedi, though, responds to the answers to call. What what are your it could, guesses? Yeah, it could be a force ghost that answers the call. <laughs> no, you know what, Nick? I think I it's gonna be freaking Luke Skywalker. You think? I do think. I don't think his uh oh god, when does when does this take place again? Before before seven five, and after five, six? Five years. You had that back after after the Battle of Yavin. <laughs> After Yavin, five years after Yavin. Yeah, five years after six. So, um, no, I don't think Luke's, uh, his attitude towards Ray portrays any type of connection towards the child in his past. I feel like he would have been more receptive. But he had a whole unless he had a very bad experience with the child. But there was a lot of no, but there happened. was a but there was a lot of children he was training, remember? He had yeah. a new Jedi temple. Right. So why can't the child be there? No, yeah, no, no, you're right. My bad, my bad. His attitude towards Ray was because of Kylo, which hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So we could get a de-aged Luke. 
pop up at the very end of the season. There would be a lot of de-aging. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Mark Hamill. It, it's been a while. I think they could pull it off. It might look five like years, a little five bit. years after Yavin, he has to look in his 20s again, possibly <laughs> early 30s. They could, they could pull it off. It would look a bit goofy, but I think they could do it. It did well with Harrison Ford. They didn't DH Harrison Ford. He, they did him in uh, uh, sorry, getting them getting it confused. Um, I'm thinking Tron. Who was that in Tron? Oh, that's Jeff Bridges in Tron. Yes, Jeff Bridges. Yeah, they they did they, a great they, job with Jeff Bridges in Tron. Yeah. So why can't they de-age? Why can't they de-age uh, Mark Hamill? Yeah. I mean, we we have the technology now on our freaking cell phones to do de-aging filters, so it's it's it, it can't be that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be a little bit harder than de-aging Samuel Jackson, but <laughs> they don't need to do anything for him. Yeah, they, they just they just put they just give him let him grow his hair out a little bit, dye it black, and that's it. Yeah. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching another Mandalorian review. Uh, check us out on Facebook and on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time. Stay nerdy. <laughs>